Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Dr. Minette Riordan here, super excited to be live with all of you, running a few minutes late this morning, <laughs> huffing and puffing, running up and down the stairs because I had to go get another cup of coffee. So I'm um, super excited to be here today. Today may be a little bit more talking than art making. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. So happy February, happy month of love. And I wanted to share a little bit about what I'm thinking about for the next couple of months ahead. And I want to talk about the 100 day project, how I think about it, how I plan for it, what I want to uh, maybe tackle for that this month. Good morning, Tori. Great to see you here live, my friend. And again, as always, just excited to be here with all of you. And I just want to say thank you to everyone that keeps showing up. It um, really makes a difference. And if you're brand new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Yvonne. Happy to welcome you to our little creative corner of the world. Good morning, Judy. I am Dr. Minette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. Yes, I am in my pajamas. Rainy Yakima. Good morning, Carol and Jackie. Welcome, welcome. Great to see you guys all here. Hi, Becky. And um, sometimes I miss seeing your, your faces too. So I have to tell you, the chat means a lot to me to know that you're here. If you just stop in and say hello, even if you don't say anything else, just knowing that you're here means the world. So painting in your pajamas with Minette is all about using art as a creative process for personal growth and self-discovery. I love to paint. My personal creative practice is painting. You can see, good morning, Judy, a lot of paintings uh, in my studio here behind me and the, the walls are covered everywhere in paintings. That's my personal practice. But what I do for the, the rest of the world and how I work with my students and my clients is the art that I make always has an intention. That intention might be simple and fun to relax, like in our Sacred Circles community. It might be a much more thoughtful, introspective practice of self-discovery, like in my Midlife Renaissance program or my upcoming Secret Garden mini retreat class. So for me, I'm always asking myself, how can I use art effectively as a tool for self-discovery? Now, I'm one of those geeky kids that has been on that path of self-discovery since discovering the existentialist and writing a paper about them in high school. So it's something I'm very fond of. Not everyone is. So if you love art for art's sake and wanting to make fine art and get to be a better artist, there are amazing teachers out there. If you want to use art in playful and creative ways to get to know yourself a little better and learn a little art along the way, then you are in the perfect place. So today, what I'm super excited about is thinking about, talking about, and showing you how I plan for a 100-day project. I mentioned this a little bit on Tuesday when we were here. I can't believe it's Thursday and it's February 1st already. It is the month of love. So my plan for February, we have a brand new series on Monday called Making Morning Sacred, where we will be creating a sacred circle together. I should have some downloads available for that by Monday if my uh, son has time to work on it this weekend. He's been super busy lately. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I want to keep up with my art journaling and intuitive collage practice because those are the things that are fun for me and I think offer the most diversity for you. And I will have for next week, a new set of self-love prompts is what I'm thinking for February, since it is the month of love. And I think it's important to be in that conversation about how is my relationship with myself? Have I even given it any thought lately? And then Fridays will be the day of the week that I share my 100-day project. So what I have decided, I'm going to go ahead and switch over my camera here is that I want to do 100 days of sketch noting, what some people call creative journaling, 
and visual thinking. So I've said it on here, hola Blanca, good morning. I have said on here so many times that I am gonna write my book this year. And what I have come to realize is that I'm not gonna be able to write the book. This will be my fourth book. I have always loved to write, but the more I've gone into the visual art side, then the little bit more challenging it's been just to get into words. So I've been having a lot of fun with a little creative journaling this month and kind of just doing a better job of capturing ideas, a lot of sketching and play. This is my personal journal that I have been sitting writing in. I'm practicing drawing Massachusetts wildflowers. So when we start to think about the 100 day project, and I really love the size of this journal and that is part of what I'm thinking about what, as well. We need something that we know is doable and as creatives that we're not gonna get bored. Um, I have this old journal I started a couple of years ago with all of these sweet cartoon characters related to some of the content I've been thinking about now for a few years for my book and lots of just drawing and sketchy practice. So I think that was it. Um, one of the things I love to do when I'm planning for a project is to do mind maps. So if you've never done a mind map before, a mind map is a concept that was originally created by a guy named Tony Buzan. I think I'm spelling this right. And it is a visual thinking tool. So I mentioned sketch noting, creative journaling, and visual thinking. Good morning, Marion. But these are all tools that help us to get ideas out of our head and onto paper where we can see them. Good morning, morning, morning. Traveling to see mom, lucky mom. Wish you were traveling to see me. Good morning. And for those of you that um, are on my email list, I wanna say thank you. I asked in my email list yesterday for people to follow me on Instagram. I'd been lingering right at 3,000 people forever. It's not where I put a ton of attention and energy, but I really wanted to bump up over that 3,000. And um, we got almost 100 new subscribers, so well over that. So super excited and just feeling a lot of deep gratitude this morning. So the concept of mind mapping, and it can be done just with a pen, it can be done colorful with markers. It's a visual thinking tool that helps us go from a bunch of scattered idea to some semblance of idea, and they can be fun and beautiful, and they can be used to plan anything. So for example, if you were a gardener and you were thinking about your garden and when to plant things, you could literally do a creative brain dump of all the things in your head. But I wanted to create a quick mind map this morning of what to think about if you're considering a 100 day project, right? So um, the hashtag on Instagram is hashtag the 100 day project. And of course, that's not going to all fit in my circle. So in the center of your mind map, <clears throat> you want to have your central idea. So if you're listening to me going, I don't know what the heck the 100 day project is, or if you're like me and you tried a few years in a row and never successful, successfully completed one, this might help you change your mind because it's easy to get excited and enthusiastic about the project and then a few days in or a month in get bored. A hundred days is a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of days. So the first thing that you want to think about for your hundred day project is having a theme. So for me, the theme is basically this idea of sketch notes, Uh, creative journaling and visual thinking. And I love visual thinking tools. I'm very much a 
visual learner. So for me, I learn more from pictures than just reading words. If I'm reading words and I really want to learn, I have a good short-term memory, so I always did well on tests, but I never retain the information. But if I see it visually, I'm much more likely to retain that information. And we can make this even more fun by maybe just adding some little icons here that looks like a sketch note. And creative journaling for me is a, a fun idea. And visual thinking is always kind of that interconnectedness of ideas, right? So make your mind map fun and visual and it will help you think through things. So the first thing to think about is what's your theme. The second thing to think about here is why. And this is true for pretty much anything in your life. If you don't have a big enough why, then you're probably going to not stick to it, whether that's exercise, healthy eating, a consistent creative practice, getting better at something, I don't know, starting a business, remembering to call my dad more often, like there needs to be a, a, a bigger why here. So for me, when I think about the 100 day project, I think about a couple of things. Another way to say that it's what's my intention. So for me, I always love to learn something new. Improve or get better at something. I want it to be fun. And because at my core, I'm a super practical girl, I want it to be practical and useful. So theme, why? First two places to start. So how many people that are listening are thinking about the 100 day project? How many have done them and failed or done them and succeeded? How many of you are like, heck no, I'm bouncing off. I don't wanna hear anything about this. Even if you don't want to hear about the 100 day project, learning about mind mapping is a great tool. So the theme, the why, and then I want to think about the structure. I want to think about how to avoid boredom. I want to think about and I think somebody asked me this the other day. What do you do with what you create? Yep, so some of you thinking about it, started and stopped. I started and stopped so many times. You've completed several years, but not sure you'll do it this year. Keen on doing it this year. I've thought about it in the past, never got started. Um, yeah, it just really helps you think about it, Judy. So what do you do with it? That was something somebody asked me, what did I do with the last year? I mailed the postcards. This year, I have a very specific intention. Thinking about it, have started and stopped once. And... Um, so how to avoid boredom, what to do with it, what else? I had some other questions in my head, I should have, and they'll probably come as we go around this. So structure might be things like, if you're a visual artist, thinking about it, if you're a visual artist, it might be the substrate, right? Um, if you want to get better at colored pencils, it might be a choice of tools, right? And substrate simply means are you going to do 100 postcards, 100 tags, 100 pages in your journal, 100 um, mini books, right? So the substrate is what's the surface that you're working on? What are the tools that you're going to use to create it? Are you going to share it? So we might put how to, well, actually that could be, let's get a whole different one over here. 
I would say how or if to share the project, if that's important to you. And I have a plan for that this year. Um, other things I think about with uh, structure, so substrate, tools, uh, the mediums. You could do 100 days of gardening, 100 days of haiku. You could do 100 days of trying new recipes where you try one a week and you break it down. Um, so that's another way of thinking. So this is kind of the physical structure. But we can talk about also, and it's hard to read all that upside down. I'm writing all over the page. So theme, why? This is the physical structure, like what are you actually doing? So this might be a better question here might be, what is it? And you can see you're getting a, a glimpse into like how I think about things. I use mind maps to plan two of my books, the last two books that I wrote. I have used mind maps to outline course designs. My midlife renaissance program started as a mind map of steps that I wanted, you know, to be able to take people through and then the, the content in those steps. So when I think about my why, I want to learn something, right? So for me to learn something um, new, creative journaling is a new way of journaling for me. And what do I mean by creative journaling? It was that image that I showed. It's a way of capturing your day that is both visual and written. And I love things that are a combination of visual and written. So this would be examples of creative journaling or sketch journaling where it's some art and some words, right? So that's something that's pretty new to me. I want to improve my sketch noting and I usually like to do these on really big pieces of paper, right? Um, how do I make it fun for me, right? It's like I have to keep it fresh. And how is this going to be practical and useful? The goal by the end of the 100 days is to have a lot of my book done, if not my whole book done. So I have set an intention that I would love to show up for the Book in the Woods retreat in Massachusetts with my book complete. That's a very aggressive goal. We'll see if it happens, but I have a lot of time to, to make that happen. So the theme here is twofold. So I'm going to use visual thinking, creative journaling, and sketch notes to explore the theme of, so the theme of my book is a heroine's journey for the second half of life. I'm a big fan of fantasy fiction and story. As you guys all know, I love the hero's journey. Maureen Murdoch wrote a great book on the heroine's journey, but none of it feels appropriate to me in the stage of life that I'm on. And yet I still, at 59 this year, see my life as a big adventure and a quest to still be living my best life. So the theme of the book is going to be a heroine's journey for the second half of life. So that is the a different kind of a theme and I have already sketched out. I had a ton of fun sitting in front of the TV. I have done my first iteration of a treasure map to start to map out the themes of the book right and how I want people to travel through the book. I had fun practicing different um, map icons to be able to add and you can see how the the process went from words to ideas to images so this is visual thinking and it is so much freaking fun for me it might not be as fun for everybody so another thing that I want to think about, so my substrate is going to be paper and 
I haven't yet decided, and I think it's going to be twofold. So the official project starts on February 18th. And one of the things I want to do is to start to build my uh, sketch noting vocabulary, which means I get to have fun practicing drawing icons and symbols and stick figures and things that I might want to use in my book. So I'm going to use some three by five note cards, index cards for the library of ideas. And then I will use a journal for starting to flesh out those ideas so they're all in one place. And I don't need my book to be a great big long book. I want it to be kind of workbooky. So I'm very present to, you know, I, I get, but I don't have any sense yet of what those pages look like. So there's going to be a lot of practice. So I'm going to work on note cards and I'm going to work in a journal. So my tools are going to be really simple. So I'm going to have black pen. I'm going to have a pencil. And I'm going to have some colored pencils because I'm really loving playing with colored pencils right now. But I may have some watercolor, watercolor markers. And I don't know if I want this book to be color. Uh, it makes an expensive book to purchase if it's in full color. So it might end up need, needing to be a book that's black and white. So that's um, questions to think about, right? Questions that I have, right? Is it color <clears throat> or black and white? So as I go along this process, it's going to continue to bring up more and more questions, right? And so mediums and tools. So the mediums for me, I'm not painting, I'm not using um, a whole bunch of collage, right? So I don't need to develop here. My tools are super simple. So one thing to think about when you're thinking about the, the 100 day project, how easy can you make it? So um, Blanca, you did uh, last year, wasn't it? You did eyes or, or body parts, right? If I remember something like that, you could do a face a day. You could do a three by five sketch. You could do an artist trading card. Those of you that are in our sacred circles membership, you could do a sacred circle um, a week, right? And have different layers of it or take the minis and do a hundred mini sacred circles. So there's so many ways to think about this, but structure is really important. So how do we avoid boredom when we think about the 100 day project? My friend Andrea had a great idea. So last year, I think it was last year, um, I know she does it every year also. Um, she did 100 days of tags and every 10 days she changed up her approach. So sometimes it was collage, sometimes it was painting, sometimes it was sketching. So every 10 days she gave herself a, a new theme. So you can change the theme. So for her, the thing that was the same was the substrate, but she changed the theme every 10 days, right? It's a 100 day project. That means 10 themes. Um, how to avoid boredom? Keep it small. Do not tackle, you know, a 24 by 24 canvas, right? paint a two by two something or a little four by four canvas. I, you know, Brad and I talked about it. So I'm thinking about what's going to be practical and useful. I could paint a hundred small pictures that I could sell. My friend Robin Marie often creates things that at the end she can sell. So keep it small is a big part of it. The other thing, other way to avoid boredom don't make it too hard. Meaning if you're learning something new, 100% Judy, you could take a really large canvas and approach small sections. I mean, how cool would it be to paint the same canvas for 100 days, right? You would learn a lot from doing that. Um, 
don't make it too hard. What I mean by that is don't make this an opportunity to create something that you have not enough interest in or that feels too challenging or that you have to go buy a whole bunch of stuff for. So I would say the way to avoid bo boredom, vary the theme, keep it small, don't make it too hard, right? And how fun can you make it? How fun can you make it? Also, it's really important to think about um, in terms of structure, I might add when. When am I going to do it every day? Because I know myself if I don't have a plan. So last year I did 100 days of animal postcards. I also batch created them, right? So I painted a whole bunch of backgrounds or I would do a bunch of collage and paint over them or I drew a bunch of animal templates and then every day I zentangled one. And I often did this in the evenings after work. So when are you going to do it every day? So um, know the time and the place. The other thing I would say about structure is set it up in advance. And what I mean by set it up in advance is have a place that you can set this project up and it stays set up for the 100 days or um, create a, a nice little uh, project box. If it's a small project, like get one of those 12 by 12 nice plastic boxes or a photo box or a shoe box of some kind and put all the things that you need for the project in a box. If you're a knitter or you love to crochet, right, then get a basket and put all the things in the basket. So have set it up in advance and keep it in one place. Even though I have a ginormous studio, I have a million projects going on at once. So I have sample projects I'm creating for multiple collaborations. I have a canvas painting of a lion that I have started. I got some new books over the weekend and tore them up for collage. And now there's a stack of book guts and the blank books for bookmaking that haven't been put away. So for me, I want my 100 day project to personally, this is for me, to be portable so I can move around the house. During the next 100 days, I have quite a bit of travel, so I need it to be portable. I need it to go with me everywhere. So for me, that idea of a project box is going to be extra valuable and the size of the project is going to be extra valuable. So my daughter gave me this journal when she came home for a visit last year, and I have fallen in love with the size of this journal. Now, it's not um, great paper for mixed media, but it's great for sketch noting and drawing and um, journaling, right? So that substrate, what journal I pick is really important how many tools I need is really important and how I'm going to travel with it feels really important. So I think this is that big question of what do you do with it? What do you do with it? So some um, ideas, right, for what do we do with it? What would be your ideas for your own 100 day project? Like Judy said, if you had a large canvas, Oh my gosh, you could do some kind of really beautiful abstract floral and you can hang it in your living room. If you're making a hundred tags, right? So you can gift it, you can sell it, you can throw it away, my friends. I can't tell you how many hundred day projects you can throw it away. If it's in the journal, you get to tuck it away and celebrate it and pull it out on occasionally. Like I had fun pulling out some old sketchy journals today. So you could gift it, sell it, throw it away, tuck it away. You can share it. And the cool thing about sharing it is 
people will celebrate your progress, right? So it's not about making gorgeous, share-worthy art for Instagram or Facebook or wherever you love to play or Pinterest, but it is about having that feeling of creating in community. And I think that's, you know, if we go back to that why and that intention, there is energy generated by making art in community, right? There's a reason that you guys show up here a few times a week to play with all of this. So share it, gift it, sell it, throw it away, tuck it away as a memory for later or toss it in the trash can. So I love throwing away art. So there is my cheesy little trash can. You can sell it, you can gift it. So I'm already starting to think about my sketch notes, right? And what are those little icons that we can use? So again, the mind map is just kind of helping me think about what do I need to know? Um, so color versus black and white is something I need to know. Um, I wanna ask, what do I need to learn that I don't know now? What do I need to know or learn that I don't know now? I have taken so many classes. I had books on sketch noting. Do I remember how to draw all the icons and the fancy banners? No. So um, how much practice do I need? That's a question, right? Um, when I think about, because for me, the practical useful part of this is to write a book, is there research? that I wanna do before I start. And then I can use these note-taking, sketch-noting, and visual journey, journaling to capture, right, some of that research. And boy, does Manette love research. And so I have to be very mindful to not get lost in research and reading other people's books and remind myself. So for me, one of those big questions might be um, around why self-trust, right? I know enough to do this. And another one might be intuition, like leaning into how can I just channel the book from everything that I know already? So this is a very messy, not a beautiful mind map. If you Google mind maps and look at some of the images, there's some really gorgeous examples. I'm going to redraw this and clean it up and make it pretty. And I will share it out on social with some ideas to support people in planning for their 100 day project. And then the last one I had here was how and if do I want to share it? Well, for me, I'm a business owner and I'm a marketer and I love marketing and I'm a very geeky artist because I actually love marketing. I've been in business for a really long time. So for me, it's important to share it. So when I was brainstorming about some of this with uh, Robin Marie Smith, by the way, Robin Marie Smith has a fabulous downloadable PDF for planning your 100 day project. So if you you are a more linear person and she has great questions in that that are probably different from these questions, then I um, recommend going and just do a Google search for Robin Marie Smith 100 Day Project and you'll see some of the amazing things she does. So her idea was to share daily on IG. Well, I never share daily on IG. That feels like a lot. So I might do instead um, a weekly recap. I'm going to do a weekly lesson and recap on YouTube. And we just moved my website away from where it was over to our new platform on Simplero. And I want to get going with my blogging. So one time a week, I can do a recap blog post that also links back to my YouTube channel, right? So there's the marketer in Manette thinking about all of these ideas. 
So another way that I want to think about doing this, and I think maybe Robin Marie had a great uh, calendar, printable calendar. So some of the other tools we can use to set ourselves up for success. So where am I going to put that? So we're going to just come way out here in the corner and how to set yourself up for success. This is probably the, the most important one. Plan. Plan, 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 right? That's the most important thing is to have a plan. You have to plan it. You have to write it out. Write your ideas out. And then make it fun to keep track. So for you, is that a checklist? Is it a calendar where you're marking X's on all of the days? Um, I follow the artist Austin Cleon, who is the author of Steal Like an Artist and Show Your Work. I am a huge fan. His work is amazing and so inspiring. And he had this hilarious little sketch on Instagram yesterday about practice and um, how much better we would be uh, after a hundred days of practice. I'm going to see if I can find it real quick because I think the writing, you know, what he said about it was so important. And it says, uh, if you can read that, it says practice suck less. He said practice every day, put an X in the box and after 29 days you will suck less. So he is doing a suck less challenge, which I think is hilarious. He has kind of a very quirky sense of humor, right? But it's that good reminder of how to stay committed is to remember why you're doing it, what you want the outcome to be, and how proud of yourself you're going to be by the time you finish it up, right? So plan it, write it out, and keep track are ways to set yourself up for success. And I would say um, gather all your tools in advance, right? Come Go back to that project box idea and gather all your tools in advance. So those are just some of the ideas that I have and that I've been thinking about for what I'm doing and how I uh, am doing it. So it's using this mind map to come in and play. So I'm actually thinking that I might make my journal to make it more fun for me and to get the paper that I want. So, you know, maybe this is a handmade journal and I have the perfect square book. It's a little bit bigger than this one. And then that can become a question mark because like, do I want to put the energy into making it? And the other thing we can do to set ourselves up for success is to prep in advance. So for example, the 100 day project officially starts on February 18th this year. So I've got a couple of weeks to think about it, get all this done. And if I want to be able to dive right in to the sketch noting and the creative journaling, maybe over the next couple of weeks, I'm spending my time creating my library of visual ideas and tools. So those are some of my thoughts. Does anybody have any questions? Is this useful at all? Is it completely overwhelming? And you're like, okay, Manette, you totally turned me off doing the 100 day project. Uh, what are you guys thinking about? I'm gonna drink some of my coffee here. Did I scare you all away? Highly possible. It's all good. Yeah, it is a matter of narrowing down what to do. So how do you narrow down that theme, right? Is for me, I always ask, what do I want to learn or get better at? So the other cool benefit of the 100 day project 
is you'll find your style right? You'll totally find your style because, uh, so last year I did a hundred days of animals. I tried all kinds of different things, but I really love my Zentangle inspired animal art on the canvas, on a postcard, in a journal. It's my favorite thing. So for me, the next step is to plan out exactly what I'm going to be doing. Yes, totally, Yvonne. Love the, the mind mapping is such a beneficial tool for all kinds of things. Use it for your gardening. Awesome. I love that. Makes you want to do it again. New grandson do any day. Tori, yay. I'm so excited for you. How much fun is that? So Tori, um, here's just an idea for you because you are in love with uh, learning more about Zentangle that um, I don't know if you've seen yet, but in Zentangle, there's little two inch square tiles. They're called bijou tiles, and you can either buy the pre-done ones or cut your own two inch tiles. You could do a tangle pattern a day, right? That's something that takes five minutes. So one thing to ask is how fun you can make it, but you can also ask how simple can I make it? right? How simple can I make it? It can't be super complicated, right? So I would say keep it small and keep it simple would be another idea here for you. Um, I love for gardening, a half marathon seems more attainable to you, part one and part two, 100%. But Marion, you already have a daily creative practice of drawing a soul collage and oracle card, you know, so maybe the 100 day project isn't that useful for you. But it could be 100 days of watercolor swatches, right? Or practicing with a watercolor brush to make different marks. It could be 100 days of doodles. So I want you guys to think um, about the things that you already love doing that you want to get a little bit better at. And nobody says you have to do it every single day. There were times when I would make five postcards at a time. So at the end of 100 days, I had 100 of them. I did not make a postcard every single day. But my intention was to make 100 of them. Doing zines for your grandsons, how fun is that? Using them as a way to inspire the boys. Ama zines, oh my gosh. Yes, and break it down. So that's great, Carol. If you did like one every 10 days, you could break it down into, I'm going to make them all, right? And then I got to cut the paper. Like there's all the different parts of that. I love that. I love that. I'm envious of all the, the grandbabies. I had a, people over an Amazine every 10 days. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful way to look at it, right? So the intention of the 100-day project is to get you to be consistent in your creative expression, whatever that expression is. And there is a fabulous newsletter in the description of the video. I shared some information from the woman that is the um, kind of the person that is in charge of organizing this. I think her name is Lindsay. I can't remember. Um, Awesome. Yeah, glad you uh, You probably can't see the whole thing. I'll share a better, or I can zoom out a little bit if you guys want to screenshot that as well. But I'll also make like a prettier version for sharing too. So have some fun with this. Just um, get creative and you have 18 days to make a decision, right? I'm not here to say that anyone and everyone needs to do the 100 day project. I'm sharing how I approach it, why I'm doing it this year, and what I think the benefits are to participating in the 100 day project. It consistently makes me a better artist, even if I don't do all 100 days. A few years ago, my husband and I, uh, started down the path during the pandemic of doing something called 75 hard. I won't go into details. We made it 45 days and then decided it was taking up way too much of our other time. And so we backed off from that. But man, were we consistent and in better health and shape and mindset after even 45 days, right? So there's no blame, shame, 
judgment about how you structure this, if you miss a day, right, anything like that. So I'm super excited to go back and make a pretty and a little bit more shareable version of this and uh, we'll put a link to a PDF of a nicer version of it in the description of this video as well. And when I come back tomorrow, I'm going to have some fun new self-love themed prompts for February for you. And we're going to get back to some painting tomorrow. We'll get back to some painting tomorrow. So I'm glad it's helpful. My aim is to be useful and uh, it's helpful for me too to think about, okay, what have I not thought about yet? What have I not thought about yet? So still lots to do, but it's a great beginning. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I will be back tomorrow morning, Friday at 7 a.m. with some art journaling. So gather up your acrylic paints and some mixed media supplies and let's get back to painting. I'll see you all there. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye-bye everybody.